Um, we can also rearrange, uh, here, here's a good time for me to show you the undo history window, which shows you everything you've done uh, going back to the initial state of the project. And you can quickly switch between these, and it's, it's very fast and, and easy to do. So I'm going to just go back to the initial state. And I'll just mention that we have the region set. So in this instance, we have uh, you know, our first chorus sort of structure. You can easily go and just rearrange them in that fashion. Uh, or you can duplicate them. So if you want to add a few choruses, and that's sort of thing. Uh, yeah, so uh, I guess, I don't mind time. Um, I'll, I'll move on from uh, editing to show off uh, some of Reaper's mixing features. Uh, Reaper has, for every track, you can insert any number of effects, and we support VST and DirectX and, and our own uh, effects that you can program on the fly for so long time. Uh, and it's very easy to, to use because you can just drag and drop the effects around to reorder them. Uh, if you want to add them, we have an effects browser that you can quickly search and you can create folders, uh, all this sort of stuff. The real nice thing also is we support drag and drop. Uh, so if I have an EQ setting that I want to apply to a tom, for example, I can just drag it on there and it copied it with settings and everything. Um, you can do this with multiple effects at the same time. You can uh, set presets of all these effects and, and they will save their state and their bypass state. So if you have a, a default that you like, you can always just uh, recall it very easily. Can you do that with envelopes? <laughs> we'll, we'll talk after. I, I'm running out of time here. Uh, we, support, we actually support uh, ex inserting external hardware, uh, be it effects or synthesizers, directly anywhere in any effects chain uh, so that you can use whatever equipment you have. Um, and all of this is uh, delay compensated uh, fully with all the routing, which I'll, I'm about to get to. Um, the, a great thing about Reaper tracks, too, is that they have, uh, they're more than just holding items and effects. Uh, this track, for example, is a folder track, which then contains and routes uh, the tracks that are within it. So we have all of our symbols routing through a, a compressor. Um, tracks, in addition to that, uh, can have any number of sends and receives. So they, they function as buses, really. Um, so I'll give you an example. Uh, for example, if we wanted a reverb, uh, we could add a reverb track, just put it at the end, call it reverb. Uh, go ahead and add, uh, add a reverb. We have a convolution reverb that we include. Uh, I'll go find an impulse. Level up, I'll solo it. So uh, we play, there's nothing happening because the reverb track doesn't have any items in it, but I'll go ahead and just set up a receive from the snare drum. So now we have the snare drum coming through the reverb. And if we were to say we want to bring a vocal track in. It's not I won't say anything about that vocal track. Okay. So, <laughs> so you can do a simple sort of like create creation of buses this way. Uh, you can also do more co complex things, like uh, for example, you can do real side chains. Uh, so I'll as an example, I'll, I'll set up the uh, kick drum ducking the bass guitar. Uh, so first thing I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and, and set up the bass track. So each track in Reaper can have up to 64 channels that you can route independently. So uh, I'm setting up a four channel track uh, and I'll set it up to receive from the kick drum, uh, the, kick, the dry kick drum before uh, any effects and come into the second pair of stereo signals. Uh, so then uh, when I play, so we have soloing the bass track, and, and I'll just go ahead and, and uh, insert a compressor. Uh, and I can set the compressor to use the auxiliary input, which is by default mapped to the second pair of channels. So uh, I can go ahead and just set it up to be ducking the, the, uh, the bass guitar with the kick drum. Uh, this is a pretty extreme sort of scenario. Uh, but it shows you how it's easily done. And there's no hacks involved, there's no plugins that magically send data behind the scenes. It's all sort of above the board and, and predictable. Uh, so, yeah, that covers that. Uh, we also support MIDI. Uh, all this demo so far has been all based on audio, which uh, I don't know what the distribution is of people here. But uh, MIDI in Reaper has actually done the, nearly the exact same way. Um, every track has the ability to run uh, MIDI through it as well as, as audio. So, for example, if you wanted to add a MIDI track, uh, you just add a track and call it MIDI. My bad, Sim. And uh, we can add, uh, 
show you the basic synthesizer that we include with this. Uh, and uh, I'll add a MIDI item. And here's your piano roll style interface. And go ahead and go ahead go add, add uh, notes to it. Um, so this just happens using the same effects chain system where everything's just routed through the synth. Uh, yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, I'll show one more thing. Uh, two more minutes, okay? All right. Uh, so the nice thing is that this really ends up blurring the gap between uh, MIDI and audio. So for example, on this kick track, uh, it's very easy to go and set up a gate that, send, that sends MIDI. So I've got semi MIDI, and then I'll set up a sample player, which will then play a kick sample. Of course, this kick track is in solo, so. triggering a, a drum sample. And this is something that a lot of people do using like Drumagog and things of that nature, uh, plugins like that. But what we actually let you do is go and uh, say, apply the MIDI back to the item. So I can uh, apply the effects as a, as a MIDI output. Uh, and here we have, in the item, we have the kick drum as a kick drum and the kick drum as a MIDI event. Uh, so we can play it, and if we want to edit it, we can go and add additional hits. Uh, and edit drums that way as well. So it really ends up combining these things in a way that, that makes sense and, and uh, is very powerful. Uh, I'll just go ahead and mention some compatibility things. We support import and export of uh, EDL for, for Vegas and Samplitude. Uh, we support importing from Radar. Uh, we have just a lot of options for rendering your stems and, and uh, both with effects and without so that if you want to bring it into other systems, it's easy. Uh, we support all versions of Windows from Windows 98 to, uh, to Vista. Uh, we support the Mac. And, and really, the, the best thing about Reaper uh, is that you get all of this. And uh, in this instance, I've been running this whole demo from this USB key. So you can take this to any studio, and if they have a recent computer that was made in the last eight years, you can probably use it. You're not dependent on whatever software they have. It's just a matter of uh, being able to use your software and play your projects uh, on your terms. So uh, we have a website, it's called reaperaudio.com. Uh, you can check it out, you can download it, Reaper, and try it for free. And uh, I guess we'll do Q&A later. Uh, so thanks a lot, Jeff. All right, you're welcome, Jeff. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thanks for having me to this table and change the video feedback to a match. So pardon me for a second here. <laughs>